Blade Smiths, congratulations. You've made it into the third round of this competition, and now it's time to send you back to your home forges to recreate this iconic weapon from history. That weapon is... Charlemagne's Joyeuse. Today we are pre-testing Charlemagne's Joyeuse. The Joyeuse was supposed to be a sword wielded by Charlemagne. And it is your standard sword that, as you look at it, is quite decorative because it's a homage to the great Charlemagne. Meaning joyful, the Joyeuse is considered one of the most famous swords in history and was the personal sidearm of King Charlemagne. After the fall of the Roman Empire, Charlemagne used the blade in battle to reunite Western Europe. Covered in gold, jewels, and floral patterns, this weapon was light and deadly and earned the reputation as the sword that conquered Europe. Featuring a double-edged blade with a deep central fuller, the sword was also rumored to have magical powers, like the ability to shine brighter than the sun. Today, the legendary sword can be seen on display at the Louvre. So when we test a weapon that's tied to a historical figure, I try to embody the feeling of who that historical figure was. When did he live? How did he fight? So that way, it ties into the kind of weapon that I'm wielding. At the same time, it gets me into character, I guess. I try to embody the spirit of who they were and how they fought. So we had some weapons like Genghis Khan or the Barbarian, I'll fight you like a barbarian. Or we had General Patton's sword. And of course, now we have Charlemagne's Joyeux sword. So with this particular weapon, we actually engage multiple targets, which they do in combat. It's not just a one and done. Now, when you create that kind of scenario, it allows me to truly test the balance of the weapon. When I say balance, it's not only just the weapon in my hand, it's how do I move with my legs with it. When I'm moving around, attacking different targets, every time you move, it really gives you information about how the weight of that weapon will affect the way you move. This is a multi-use weapon, so I wanted to see how many different ways can I cut, can I thrust, can I chop with it. Pre-testing the Joyeuse against the boar really gives us information of that edge, how well it can cut thick hide. Sure was a lot of fun. It will kill. Good luck, we'll see you in four days. So I'm gonna use a big piece of 5160 bar stock can take a lot of damage and flex well. I want to make sure I got the length of the blade done down to a reasonable size. So this steel is definitely the most awkward thing that I've ever worked with in the shop. It's like a big wet noodle. I'm going to weld up a 15 layer Damascus billet and make a twist pattern Damascus. I think it'll really set the sword up for a nice look. So I got the forge weld set and I'm going to draw it out to length. Now that I have my pieces all shaped, I'm gonna start heat treating the blade. So I get my sword up to the perfect temperature and I'm ready for quench. And I pull it out and it's just beautiful. <laughs> Feels amazing to have a fully quenched blade. So my biggest fear of putting in this fuller is just grinding right through my blade. I can kind of tell how close it is just by feeling it with my hand. After about an hour, the fuller's done and everything is looking good. It's coming out pretty well. Now I can work on profiling the pommel and guard and getting them exactly to where I want it. For my handle, I choose diamond wood because it can take a lot of abuse and it's not gonna break. I'm in the home stretch now. It's a good looking piece. We're gonna start out with a bar of 1075 high carbon steel. We're going to do a lot of the quick forging to shape with a power hammer. Whenever you try to move a big piece of metal like this, it's quite a challenge to keep it straight. Whoa. It's getting uh, long and heavy and hard to hold. It's cooling down between a couple of two by sixes, so that way it doesn't warp as it cools down. Now we're going to get ready for heat treat. Getting pretty close to coming up to temperature, so we're about five minutes away and we'll be quenching her. This is it. And then my hand cramps and I drop the blade into the quench tank. Well, I'm worried that hitting the bottom of the quench tank did some damage. Come on, man. I tried to fish it out, 
but unfortunately, I didn't catch anything. Ended up pouring it out in the five gallon bucket in my yard. I got the blade out, so it's all good now. I did pick up a slight warp close to the tip. I should be able to straighten that out during the temper cycle, so time will tell. My biggest focus is gonna be getting the blade straight, and so I wanna get that out of the way and then go from there. My solution is to extend the width of the jaws with some angle iron, heat it up, and use some wooden dowels to put the proper pressure where it needs to be. She's straight. Oh, that's so freaking awesome. Now I need to make the handle. Time's running out, so it's a race to the finish. All right, she's getting there. End of day four. Man, it's been quite a trip. Everything turned out great. A lot of hard work, but I believe it really paid off in the end. <laughs> That's a sword in four days. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out how lethal your weapons are according to its historic design, I will take your weapon, deliver some killing slashes, and thrust on this poor carcass. Mitch, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. All right, Mitch, let's talk about your sword here. Your edge coupled with the weight that you have here allows for very deep cuts with every strike. Overall, sir, you'll kill. Thank you. All right, Peyton, it's your turn. You ready? Oh, yeah. For this test, I'm not too nervous. I'm just excited to see it happen, honestly. I get to see this board get cut in half, <laughs> hopefully. All right, Peyton, that was joyous. What I like about this sword, it's not just about the edge or the point, it's the balance in this. I can actually use some velocity and it cuts deep. Overall, sir, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test. Now to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I will be attacking our armored knights here. Now, this is not about what your blades are going to do to that target, about what that target's going to do to your blades. Mitch, you're up first. You ready for this? Yes, sir. OK. Please don't break. Please don't break. I think I just peed a little. All right, Mitch. Your edge did take some damage here. You can see the chip right there and some rolls. And your sword is heavy. <laughs> you know, this is a, a lot of weight for a single-handed sword, more in the range of a two-handed sword as far as the weight goes. But um, she held up. She's in one piece. Good job, Mitch. Thank you. All right, Peyton, you're up. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> one of those, I don't know which way my head's going to go. Yeah. All right, Peyton, it's weighty, but the, the weight is all back in my hand, so it doesn't feel as heavy in the blade. This sword has a much better point of balance than the other sword. Your blade did take some chips and some edge rolling, but I think you, your grinds are beautiful. The sword is all solid. You did a good job. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test, the sandbag gauntlet. Now, to test the sharpness of your weapon, I will slash across these bags. Now, unlike the strength, this is all about how sharp your blades are and how well they cut these bags. Mitch, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir.
right, Mitch. So despite some of the damage of rolls and chips, it wasn't an issue at all in cutting these bags. It will cut. Thank you. All right, Peyton, your turn, sir. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, Peyton, the handle construction is smooth, but I'll avoid enough to where I wrap my hand around it and I get a very good grip. You will cut. Thank you. Mitch, Peyton, the judge's deliberation is complete. You guys have done fantastic work on these finale weapons, but there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. Our new Forged and Fire champion is... Peyton, congratulations. You're the Forged and Fire champion. Mitch, unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. Mitch, you brought us a sword that performed well in all three of our tests. So this came down to the finer points of craftsmanship, as in where to place the balance point on that blade and the general weight. That balance point being so far forward made it harder to wield and harder to control, and that's why we're letting you go. I understand. Mitch, you've been a great competitor this entire competition, but at this time, I have to ask you to please surrender your blade. Obviously a little disappointed. Overall, happy with what I turned in and uh, happy for Peyton. If I had to lose to anyone, I'd just soon lose to him. Peyton, congratulations. You are the new Forged and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Please present your sword to the judges. I'm the next Forged and Fire champion. Ah, oh, it's just crazy. As soon as I heard my name, it was just like a weight just got pulled off my chest. Just like, oh, it's over. <laughs> Finally can breathe.